Suppose that you're taking on a new project and you're trying to figure out how to finance it. One option might be to issue some equity. Another option might be to issue some debt or to take on some debt. Now, there's many factors that go into these decisions and like the key one being what are the value implications. But one thing you might be interested in is how EBIT and EPS are going to relate under these two scenarios. So what we've got here in this plot is uh, mapping that relationship between EBIT, which is on the x-axis, and EPS, which is on the y-axis. Now, this orange line right here shows the relationship between EBIT and EPS if you issue some equity. This blue line up here shows that exact same relationship between EBIT and EPS, except under that scenario, you're issuing some debt. Now, I'll show you how to construct these lines in a second, but there's two things that I want to point out. The first is that there is going to be some point somewhere in that region um, where you are indifferent um, between issuing debt and issuing equity. That is, for a given level of EBIT, it's going to translate into the exact same EPS. Now, the other thing I wanted to point out here is under the debt scenario, which is the blue line, this one, the line is actually steeper. And it's steeper because EBIT becomes more sensitive, or sorry, EPS becomes more sensitive to EBIT when you're adding leverage. And when you're issuing debt, you're adding leverage. So let me show you how we make these, make these lines. And the first thing I need to show you here is just sort of a, a quick derivation of these lines. So the first step we need to do over here is note that EBIT minus interest minus taxes gives us our net income. Now these inter this interest expense and this taxes, these two things, these are in dollars. So we take the dollar value of EBIT minus the dollar value of our interest expense minus the dollar value of our taxes and we're left with net income. Now another way that we could write this over here in step two is we could take the dollar value of EBIT minus the interest expense. And then if we multiply it by one minus the tax rate, we're, what we're left with is that residual. We're left with the net income. Now we know that EPS is defined as the number of, uh, sorry, the net income divided by the number of shares. And so if we simply substitute net income in, so this formulation of net income, what we're left with is a relationship that between EBIT and uh, EPS, that's a formula. So we can directly translate EBIT into EPS. Now to show you how we get those, um, uh, those lines in the, the figure, um, I'm gonna switch over to Excel. So what I've set up here is a, uh, two different scenarios. Under scenario one, we are going to issue some debt. And I've got scenario one over here, the debt level, let's just say we have to issue $200 million of debt at an interest rate of 6%, and the number of shares outstanding is 100. That's just our base level. Now, suppose that scenario two here is where we issue some equity in order to fund this project. So, our, and we're starting off with a, a debt level of zero, so zero leverage to begin with. But because we are issuing equity to raise this capital, we're gonna have more shares outstanding afterwards. For this example, our tax rate is 21%. Now, over here in column A, I've just thrown uh, some different levels of EBIT, just to give us some points. In each of these columns, in column B and column C, I've implemented that formula that we just derived. So the EPS, so the EPS under scenario one is equal to the EBIT, which is um, cell A3 minus the interest expense in dollars, which is the debt level times the interest rate. Then we multiply it by one minus the tax rate. The tax rate is 0.21 in cell F6. And then we divide it by the number of shares outstanding in scenario one. 
and I simply drag this down. Scenario two, implementing the exact same formula, this time um, with zero debt level, um, but 150 sh uh, shares outstanding. What I can do then is simply plot these two lines. So uh, when we plot them, we get that figure that I showed you earlier um, with the two key important points that when uh, we issue debt, we're um, levering up the firm and therefore earnings per share is more sensitive to EBIT because we are levered. We also have an indifference point in here where EBIT will translate um, into the same EPS. Now, in order to do that, um, uh, I'm going to use solver, and actually these are the exact numbers already, but let me show you how we, I, I did it. So this is the exact same formula as in these columns in column B. This is the EPS under scenario, uh, scenario two which is the all equity case. Now, in order to use solver, I set up the difference between these two cells. Now the goal when we find um, this indifference point is where the same level of EBIT translates into the exact same EPS between those two different scenarios. So this difference, so let's just say uh, for an EBIT level of 10, well, for an EBIT level of 10, the EPS in scenario one is going to be negative 0.0158, and the EPS for scenario two is going to be 0.052666 and a lot. So there is a difference. And what we're trying to do is find the EBIT that makes these two cells identical, or this difference zero. So we can go over to solver and set the objective so the objective of solver is to set this difference to a value of zero. And the way we're going to do that is by jiggling the EBIT number right here. And when we solve for that, we get that uh, at an EBIT of approximately 36 million, uh, the earnings per share under both scenarios is going to be uh, about 19, uh, 19 cents, or 9, I don't even know what the units are, 9.1896. So right in there, the EPS is going to be about 0.19. Everything to the right of that, so with more positive EBIT, is going to have higher earnings per share, um, higher EPS when we are levered up, when we add, are in the debt scenario. But on the flip side, when we're to the left of this, so when we have lower EP, or EBIT um, under, when we have lower EBIT, our EPS is going to be lower under the debt scenario because we're levered up. So hopefully this was helpful in, uh, in showing you how EBIT and EPS are related and showing you the effect of uh, how financing options affect that relationship.